Today we're actually going to be sharing God stories. Um, normally Mike is here and shares a message and it's really nice. And, um, but this is a little out of the norm. So I hope you enjoy and you have a lot of fun. Okay, so uh, I wanted to talk a little bit. So I talked um, a couple weeks ago about um, authentic community, right? And that's one of our values here at Newground. So I thought it might be fun to quiz you to see if you guys know how many values we have here at Newground. Five. Yes, oh yes, five, five values here at Newground. So we have these awesome infographics around the church. So um, what's, what's this one over here? Prayer filled, okay, good. I wrote it down, I have a cheat sheet, so it's not really a pop quiz, it's, I cheated. Um, <laughs> okay, what is this one back here? It looks like a vine. Generous hospitality, good job. Good job. Okay, um, how about this one over here, this first one? Scripture focused. Good job. Yep. And then these two are, are my favorites. Um, this one back here with the question mark. Curious together. And then this one over here with the heart is our authentic community. So that's what I talked about a little bit um, a couple weeks ago. And I also, I feel like I missed an opportunity um, to share with you, remember when I, if you guys were here on Mother's Day? Yes, some of you were? Okay. I talked about how I was nervous and how our body can't um, differentiate between the feelings between nervous and excited. So like when you're nervous, what does your body feel like? You feel kind of like excited, right? It feels like you, you get maybe like for me, I get like a stirring in my belly and I'm like kind of... So the same happens when I'm nervous and when I'm excited, right? So the body can't tell the difference. And I feel like I missed this opportunity because we talked about the renewing of our minds, right? And we went through the daily examine and we talked about that. And the renewing of our minds changes that nervousness to excitement. So I thought I would do like a callback to that and encourage you. If you haven't had a chance to pick up, like if you really liked the daily examine, and you didn't get a chance, I printed more of those sheets, and those are out there. Um, anyway, I just wanted to um, share that with you and kind of go over, because these are our values, right? Living authentically, being curious together. Those are my two, I, I think those are my favorite ones because it, it involves us as a group, right? As a church. Um, so today we're going to share God stories. And so... Um, you are welcome to think about our values and think about um, a way that um, maybe God's been working through your life um, through prayer or through prayer here at New Ground or through prayer with, you know, somebody outside of New Ground, maybe a neighbor, or how is he working in that? Um, but it doesn't have to be, they don't, the stories don't have to be about um, any of our values, they probably will tie in in, in some way, shape, or form. Um, but just kind of think about it. I do have one person I'm going to have come up first. And then it, as you're listening, you can think about that. And if God really puts something on your heart, you can come up and share next. So I'm going to have Mary Ellen come. And I have, I am prepared today. I have a seat for you. I have Kleenex boxes for you. I mean, you should be all set this morning, so... Well, I'll help you. Yeah, I'm scared. <laughs> okay, this has been coming for a long time. Pastor Mike has been wanting me to do this God story for quite some time, and it just never, ever happened. So, basically, it's a story of gratitude and it's to him and to New Ground. When he came here six years ago, he was meeting with all kinds of people, get, wanting to get to know them, and so, sure enough, my turn, we went to EB Coffee, had some coffee, and got to talking, and about that time, my mom had fallen, and she was in a rehab home. 
And so I was having to go out to Zealand quite often. And it was taking quite a bit of gas to go out there all the time. And so he says, well, I, I think we ought to have a, a gas car. And I said, no, 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 I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm doing fine. And he finally said, he just grinned. And the next week, sure enough, there's a $100 gas card. And I'm going, I told you no. And it's way too much. And two weeks later, she died. And so I was going to need this gas card really, really, really bad. Because I was having to go to Zealand every day. And I went back to church the next Sunday, and I just looked at him, and I said, you knew, didn't you? And he just grinned. Well, my biggest piece of gratitude was I've always been a, a taker because I never had anything to give except myself. But when I got my inheritance, church got their gas card back, and they also got a 10% tithing. And it filled me with such joy because I could finally give back freely and with all the love in my heart. <laughs> Back in 2006, in August, I was diagnosed with kidney cancer. And I didn't know what was going on. The tops of both arms hurt. And uh, they kept saying, is there anything wrong with your stomach? No, no. It just feels like this pumpkin's trying to come through my chest and end up the size of a dime. So they took me to the hospital and took, I don't know, C-scans or something, I don't know top and bottom, and they come back and they say, you have cancer, and I screamed. But my thing is, I didn't have the heart attack until later on that afternoon, because the pain in the arm had gone away, but the pain in this arm hadn't. So I thank God every day that I had a heart attack. I never would have phoned that kid. Can you hear it okay? Okay, okay, that's okay. Anybody else want to share? It's going to be a super short service if nobody shares. <gasps> Wendell! So this is more of an observation than really a God story, but who knows. Um, I, we just got back from vacation. We were gone for two weeks, one week in Germany, one week in Italy. And that's the first time I was in Italy, <clears throat> and it was really glorious. Every day was a new highlight <clears throat> and it was just really special and just me, me and Karen <clears throat> and you can hear I came back with a cold <laughs> and on top of that allergy season started so my eyes a little bit um, well puffy so anyway we were in uh, Turin and then we were in a city south uh, east of Turin called Alba and that's a wine growing region. And in Turin, I mean, it's, a, it's an old city. It was, it was, I think, founded back in Roman times. And the name is Torino, which means little bull. That's why, that's how I got the name. And after all that time, there are so many beautiful buildings in that city and churches and, and museums. Um, and you can really see the history and the passion people put into these buildings uh, because of the architecture. Um, just how they're built. They're not just um, plain facades. And the same thing is uh, true throughout Italy. <clears throat> uh, Alba is a town, it's a small town um, in the middle of wine country. And I would guess that it's about a thousand people. And in this little town of a thousand people, there are three churches. And they're also very old churches. Um, one of them was open, you could just go in and look around and you could see the very ornate and, uh, um, you know, pillars and all the frescoes and all the things that, that go along with the Catholic Church. <clears throat> and um, we were there three days. Um, but the thing was, even on, on 
any day, you'll never see anybody in there except tourists. And I think it was on a Saturday, or maybe it was Sunday. We left. We left Sunday, yeah. Um, and so I walked into the other churches because they were open uh, on Sunday, Sunday morning, <clears throat> and uh, they were they had art exhibits in them. You could walk in; it was free. Somebody had done some uh, watercolor paintings, and they were exhibited there. And it was, you know, the church was a little older, old, but also not uh, restored recently. So it was kind of run down looking. You could see the paintings had some, uh, they were, um, they showed their age. Some paint was dim and peeling and things like that. And uh, it must have taken an enormous amount of effort and time to build these churches. So somebody's heart had to be in it to spend year after year uh, you know, it probably wasn't, um, OSHA wasn't around, and when they climbed those high scaffolds, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people got hurt, but it was worth it to them. It, it meant so much to them that they put all they had in it. But they're not being visited now, um, for whatever reason, and I think um, people have been disappointed in, from church in Italy, just like we have from churches here. Um, but despite all that, I mean, on the one hand, you see that all these beautiful buildings, nobody really has uh, faith enough to go there or is willing to be part of that, uh, you know, Catholic religion. Um, so you think, well, what's going to happen? You know, there nobody uh, uh, sees faith as being um, important. So what's 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 the future? <clears throat> and at the same time, I think there's there's always hope. Um, always hope that uh, God's spirit can, you know, revive a city or a country, and um, put those buildings back to to the to the use that they were intended for originally. So, um, like I said, this was just an observation, and um, I think uh, even even in the U.S., um, churches are founded, churches close and disappear. And it's always a um, process of discovery, and then you lose faith or interest, and you rediscover. So, um, but it really stood out when you have architecture like that. I think the whole, whole, um, um, the impression of, of what God means to people and what they're willing to do to to express it is so much more pronounced in those countries where they have a very very long tradition of uh, of faith. That was it. Uh, yeah, what is it? Chapter 4, continuing story. <laughs> uh, as many of you know, my wife passed away a year and two months ago now, and uh, Dusting. I guess I'm in here. Uh, and it, it's been quite a journey. Um, I was blessed that, well, Doreen was able to retire uh, in her mid-50s, and uh, we paid off the house and Go for it. And she had a lot of time with her family and kids, raising them. Um, and then I lost my job, and then it was COVID. And, you know, it was like one thing after the other. But when you look back, don't you see what God did? How he led you through that. He had a purpose for it. And, and sometimes it's hindsight. That's when I, I celebrate him because we had all that time in retirement together. And we, you know, I should still be working maybe. I don't know what it should have, could have. But, um, you know, if I was re just retired this year, we would have missed all that. God gave us that. So after she died, um, 
everything I knew was, you know, with Doreen basically in the house and um, companionship, you know, was something that I, you know, I, I searched for. But in November of last year, I believe that God told me it's time to discard your grieving. Maybe not discard it, but it no longer needs to run that part of your life. And you can let it go. And I was very grateful for that. I felt a lot of peace about that. And I actually said, you know what? If God has me for a single life, you know, in different ministries and things, um, I'm okay, you know. I'm remembering Doreen, still love her, but I can move on. And he gave me that. And at the same time, he gave me peace about what that would be like. You know? And the really amazing thing is one month later, Chris dropped into my lap. <laughs> and... Um, He's been giving us the opportunity to build that relationship, and I'm just so happy for that because you never know when that twist and turn is going to come. And as soon as you give, get rid of something, you turn over something to God, you know, you've done what he really wanted, and he gives you the things that you want in your heart. So, um, a cup, so, so, my name is Emmy, um, and, uh, so, her sister's husband's side of the family, um, came over, yeah, is here, currently, and, um, uh, we've been getting to know each other a lot, and so, uh, like, um, my cousin Forrest, who's only four, just went on his bike, and he got a new one, it's been, like, really fun, but, um, Earlier yesterday, when we were riding my bike, uh, I fell, um, and I turned the bike, and the handle went straight in my chest. And my mom said, um, and then um, this morning she said, yeah, and it was, like, really hard to breathe. And I'm still actually trying to figure it out a little bit. But um, so um, yesterday she said, I mean, t this morning she said, you know, if it went a little bit if it went lower than that, I probably could have had internal, like, an internal injury and probably had to get surgery. And that's, like, the most thing that I've ever feared. And I'm just glad that it went higher than that so that I didn't have to go through something really scary. Like, um, yeah. trying to like guilt you and like oh yes didn't even have to look look into your eyes and say come on and do this good morning I find that I'm a simple guy um and I usually move with a purpose I had a lady tell me one time, she says, you're the only person I know that walks with purpose. So all that to say is that I like to get things done and I typically move fast. But then I have to stop every once in a while and just enjoy what's around me. So this year, as I was driving out of my driveway, I noticed a kill deer. Killdeer, for those that don't know, is a little bird. And the killdeer had built a nest right beside my driveway. I mean, I got a gravel driveway, and like right next to it is a nest. So I'm always amazed at what we as humans do to preserve life. 
you know, we've had, when we lived on the farm in Big Rapids, we had cows in the house and we had chickens in the house and horses in the house and just all sorts of things, just trying to keep animals alive. So what we did with the killdeer nest, just because we get a fair bit of traffic, is I put my little driveway stakes that we use in the winter time. And I put one on either side of the nest, just to mark this is where killdeer nest is. Because Amazon comes in and UPS comes in and they usually drive pretty fast. So as people, you know, we, we do what we can to preserve life. So um, as the killdeer were, were sitting on the nest, when I would cut the lawn, it was always interesting watching Mama Kildare. You know, she'd come out of the nest and she'd pretend she had a broken wing. Um, and then I think it was Friday morning, the uh, couple of the eggs hatched. So yesterday, as we were driving out of the driveway, there were three little chicks are running around. And it was just so much fun to watch. And then again this morning, as we were coming to church, watching the three chicks running all over the lawn. Um, but just taking the time just to pause in a busy life and just to enjoy what's right in front of my nose. And it's the little chicks. And this morning watched four little bunny rabbits just chasing each other through my yard. Not a care in the world and just enjoying each other, enjoying what's around them. And for me, it was just a good reminder, just to pause. Slow down. God's in control. God's got it. But that was just one of the lessons. The other one was just watching that mama killed deer. And how the mama killed her did what she could to protect her babies. But then also what we did, you know, by putting the little driveway stakes out to say, hey, careful. And God does the same for us. He said he watches over us and he cares for us. And again, it was just all those little reminders in nature that if I allow my schedule to take control, I miss that. I miss what's right in front of me. So again, just slow down, pause, enjoy life, enjoy what's in front of you. Take time, count how many petals are on a flower, uh, stop and smell the roses, you know, all of that fun stuff. So that's my encouragement to you too. You know, I don't know if your schedule is as crazy as mine, but just, it's okay. Number 11, hit pause, number 11. It looks like an 11, I'm sorry. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, take time to enjoy God by what he's given us all around us. Practicing that pause is hard, isn't it? It reminded me of when I talked a couple weeks ago about the daily examine. So in that time, when you just take a minute and you just breathe, right? Do you want to share? Yeah, you do? Awesome. I know it's awesome. Uh. <laughs> hi. hi my name's Elias and so I'm grateful that um, Olivia made it to region roles and <laughs> for gymnastics and um, when we were on the way back it was raining outside and dad couldn't see on the highway because it was raining so hard and there was a so, well, I'm glad we made it off that highway and Dad could um, see and we, and the storm stops and, and Dad can see on the road. I about that. Thank you, buddy. It's a great metaphor in life, too. Storm's coming. It looks like we can't get where we're going. And then God looks away. I'm not going to say anything. Who's next? <laughs> I've talked enough, so. Oh, I was going to say the same thing. That's awesome how we can, you know, it feels stormy in our lives, right? And then we just trust in God that he's going to get us where we need to be. Hi, Ziva. Okay, so this is kind of scary. I've never really talked in front of people before. Um, so for a few years, um, I was, I've been, 
<laughs> um, for a couple years now, I've like struggled a lot with my mental health and trying to figure out what works and what doesn't. And so a few years back, I was officially diagnosed with lots of different mental health things. And so last year, I felt like I was really lost and I felt like I didn't, I, there was no, I guess, light at the end of the tunnel. And so there, I remember the day that I was sitting in my room and it was a Sunday morning and I hadn't gone to church in probably a couple of years. And so I reached out to Cynthia and Emma and I decided I was going to come to church and I never really connected it until now, but um, ever since I made it a priority that I was going to show up at church every Sunday and really try and get my faith back into me more because I had let it go more. And ever since I did that, I've shown up at church almost every Sunday and I've been able to improve my mental health. And actually a couple months ago, I was able to quit every med that I was on for it and I felt a lot better. So I think that's just God working in me. I love God's stories day. I love when we can have this time to share. Anybody else? Can you share? My daughter can share, I can share too. Um, okay, so my name is Annika. Um, I just realized that it is my last day of being 32. And, um, and I'm, 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 I feel like, so the thing that brings me the most joy at the moment and the thing that I spent doing all day yesterday was like, this is my gift to me. And it was gardening, and it was, I went, to, I went to Horrocks and bought a lot of stuff from my garden, and all perennial, so I said, you know, I'm justifying this cost because it's an investment in my garden, and it's going to look awesome next year, and the year after, and the year after. And there's something really interesting about getting perennials, because they don't look stunning right when you put them in. It takes time, and it is, um, you know, you're planting something that is going to bear fruit not now, but in a year from now. And so as a gardener, you have to have that vision of like, not just, you know, there's nothing and you create something out of nothing. And, um, and I feel like there's so many metaphors in gardening with what God does with our lives. And the other thing too that hit me yesterday is like I spent a lot of time weeding, I spent a lot of time mulching. And those are such thankless jobs because the, the weeds don't stay away, they come back. And so if you weed once, you have to weed a hundred times. Um, but for me, over the years since I started enjoying this, oh, and the reason I wanted to say is because I'm getting old, so now I enjoy gardening, right? Because like five years ago when I moved into this house, my dad would, he got my garden started, and he's like, remember to water? Remember he'd come over like every morning. He's like, did you water today? I was like, I don't know, I guess. And there's something different when you buy your own plants and you take ownership of them, and they're your babies, and so... I'm not going to let them go a day without being watered now. But I was just interested five years ago in going to the beach and not being home. And I was like, who wants to spend their time in the garden? And my dad was always working in the garden. I was like, it's so boring. Now I'm 30, almost three, and I'm like, oh, this is my gift to myself is working in my garden. You know? Anyways, the other thing I wanted to say about that, too, is like, for me, it's um, like if I look at my life as a garden and God as the gardener, I just see the need to like, with mental health, I've, I've shared that similar struggles, Eva, so thank you for sharing, but for me the important thing is like, I see mulching as the, the, the preventative, like the big thing that you do once a year to, or every so often to like reset the stage and to maybe go to the doctor and get diagnosed or maybe, you know, sort something out, have a come to Jesus moment and, um, and fix something big to get, it's like preventative to, to, you know, to get ahead of it. But then also you just have to keep weeding every so often and you have to root out those thoughts. And um, I saw something the other day, it's like only you can hear the thoughts in your head. And so whatever you think about yourself, nobody else actually thinks that about you. 
And so if you can keep rooting out those thoughts, every, you know, little by little, every day a little bit, then it keeps you healthier and, and happier. And I feel like, you know, we can go to, when I was growing up, we'd go to camp every year. So you go to camp every year and that's like mulching. You put down mulch and you set up, you set yourself up for the next year. But then throughout the year, you have to go to church every day because that's like you're weeding. You're, you're removing the things that are toxic to your garden. And if you, you know, God is a gardener and he's making all things beautiful, but he has a plan for your life where there's maybe nothing growing right now. He's like, oh, I'm going to get this perennial in there next year. And it looks like nothing right now, but in a couple of years, it's going to look awesome. And so I just wanted to say that because it's an encouragement to me. My garden's going to look awesome three years from now. And, um, and hopefully my life will reflect that as well. So. No, I just want to add to this. Uh, I had a friend, Crystal Dahl, Dahl, and she was a gardener, and she would bring flowers to the church every Sunday. That was her ministry. That was back in Germany, and she doesn't live anymore. But she told me once that story, how she planted a beautiful flower, and it just wouldn't grow. And it would just be small, and she would say, oh, okay, a little bit more water, a little bit more that. And she lost the patience. And finally pulled it out. And it had roots. It had grown all the time, but she didn't see it. And she didn't have the patience. And that is a very good picture for us too. Keep watering. And keep your patience. The roots are, you know, everything is growing. The foundation is flat. And the foundation needs to be there in order for the flower to finally grow up and bloom, you need the roots. This is going to be last call. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So, um, Six months ago, I was sitting in um, a hospital room in Detroit with my brother and my sister, and we were saying goodbye to our mom, basically. And it had happened really suddenly. She was working one day, had some pain, and um, got worse, got worse. And she's used to pain. That's kind of the deal when you have all the health conditions she has. But she knew it was different, and so she went to the hospital from work and ended up and various hospital stays for the next month or more maybe, because I think it was at the end of October. And there were a lot of um, just shocking like moments and like just a, a really quick deterioration. Um, we were, uh, her, me and my brother and my sister, we were very shocked and just trying to adapt. And our mom is like, you know, our hero. She raised us alone, she overcame so many trials. She worked incredibly hard um, to make sure she could provide for us. She showed up at all of our events. I don't know if she slept for 18 years. That's, <laughs> but she and she did all of that through a lot of pain. Um, and so, for us to have been given, you know, that love and that start in life, when it, she had every excuse in the world to like not be as awesome as she was as a mom, like if you think about it, um, she was dealing with so many things on her own. And so we're just have always been really grateful for her and what she kind of gave us. And um, now that we're adults and we have kids too, and they get to be around her, it's it's great. So, so we were sitting there just kind of stunned, trying to come to terms with what was happening. And um, I was driving multiple times a week from here to Detroit to go see her. And, um, you know, every day there was like worse news and worse news. So I, I came to a point where I just kind of let it, like, uh, not let it happen, but just like accepted it. And um, on one of my many drives and just kind of felt this like, I wasn't giving up, but it was like this piece of just this is what it is. I can't do anything about it, but God is still here. And I ended up that week having so many like great conversations with my mom, 
um, many like really hard experiences with her, just kind of sitting with her and she's dealing with, you know, all of these things going wrong. And um, it, it turned out to be such a really, you know, beautiful time in our relationship, which was great. But what's really great about God is you can't force these things to happen. You can't force meaningful spiritual conversations on someone like there so many things have to come together for the opportunity for these like conversations to happen and they were really meaningful and, and wonderful and I felt like grateful that I had had a chance to kind of express things to her about uh, who she who she has been into our lives so then um, in early December my mom came to live with us on hospice and that was basically the the plan is well, she passed. She's going to be with us. And when she came to our house, she was um, really couldn't walk on her own. My husband and I had to like help carry, kind of carry her into the house and get her settled. And it was a really um, hard time. We knew that she needed to be with us and we wanted to be able to provide that for her. But there was a lot of like, okay, what comes next is going to be really, really hard. Um, just going to kind of keep getting worse. So, um, Again, I, I felt, Eric and I um, felt like we were doing, you know, what we should do for her and, and to be there. And I appreciate him because it, was, it wasn't it was something I had to convince him about. It was something we both just knew was right. So that was almost six months ago. And um, there have been, um, you know, a lot of moments where I thought, okay, this is it. This is it. But then, like, inexplicably my mom would rebound and get better. And she still has like underlying stuff that's gonna be there forever. But we have had the opportunity to garden together, um, which I'm never particularly good at following through on. Like I'll get something in the ground and then Eric will be like, are you gonna do anything with it? No, probably not. Um, but now we have strawberries and raspberries and um, more to come. But what's really amazing about this is just, um, my mom's doing great right now. Like she's off visiting friends and she's, you know, she had worked so hard her entire life and this kind of forced her to retire, which she did not want to do. Um, but despite the challenges that are definitely still there, she's had more wonderful days than not. She's, um, we're getting to spend so much time together that like life doesn't normally allow. Um, we're cooking together and my family is getting better meals. They're thrilled about that. Yes, she's, she wants to be very helpful around the house so, because it, it's her physical therapy. Anyway, um, all of that to say that, like, I expected uh, to lose my mom before Christmas, and I expected it to be just, like, a really, really heavy time. And instead, she's very independent and doing really well right now. And I know that can change in this, in this heartbeat, but I'm just really, really grateful for all this time because... I, we lived out of state for a long time and we just didn't get all that grandma time. So I'm grateful for what God has done and continues to do because uh, she's got the joy of living and her body is cooperating right now. So I'm just super grateful for that and want to thank everyone for prayers. And I know people brought meals too. So thanks to this church and grateful to God. Or anybody else into a, test, a God story? No? Well, I would love to pray for you guys. So if you want to stand. Father God, we just thank you so much for each and every person here and for those that are watching online. God, we thank you for the many ways that you are just showing us who you are and the little things, and driving through the storms, Lord, and then the big things too. God, we thank you for the healing that you bring to us. We thank you for the healing of our hearts, of our minds, of our bodies. I pray right now that each and every person in this room would just feel your peace as we go today, would just be so grateful for who you are, and that would reflect as we go through the week. God, thank you 
for meeting us here today. Thank you for your love and thank you for sending your son. We love you and we want to give you the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Hey, thanks for watching the podcast. If you want to connect with us, click one of the links uh, in the description there to get to our page where there's all sorts of ways that you can find out more information about our church community, uh, what we're doing, and how you can get involved with that. Uh, hope you continue to stay. Make sure you like and subscribe. Share this with your friends if you think it's meaningful. And hope you have a wonderful week. Grace and peace, friends.